Say we have a line passing through two points, A and B, and then we also have a third point, C, somewhere over here. In this video, we'll be deriving an efficient way of calculating the shortest distance between point C and the line, and we'll also be seeing how to figure out if two points are on the same side of the line. We start with the crucial idea that the point on line AB that is closest to point C, let's call it point D, forms a line segment with point C that is perpendicular to line AB. So our first step is to calculate a vector that is perpendicular to AB. Let's begin though by first calculating the vector AB itself, which obviously is just a vector that points in the direction from A to B, and which has a length equal to the distance between those two points. So on the x-axis, this is bx minus ax, and on the y-axis, it's by minus ay. I'll now call the perpendicular vector p, and we can calculate this easily since its x component is just the y component of vector ab multiplied by negative 1, so that's negative by plus ay, while its y component is simply the x component of vector ab, so bx minus ax. Now, depending on which component we make negative, we'll get either this perpendicular vector or this one. As it turns out, we really don't care which one it is, it doesn't need to be the one that points towards point C or anything, so I'll just pick the first one. I am now going to calculate the vector AC, which of course is just CX minus AX, CY minus AY. I'll then label the angle between AC and CD as theta. Now, in a right angle triangle, such as the triangle ACD that we have over here, we know from trigonometry that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. This enables us to write cosine theta is equal to CD over length AC. We're trying to solve for the length of CD though, so let's rearrange this to CD is equal to the length of vector AC multiplied by the cosine of theta. Now, just to clarify, when I write CD, I'm essentially referring to the length of the line segment CD, but of course technically length is always a positive value, while here, depending on the value of theta, CD could be negative. I'll be coming back to this later, so just keep that in mind for the moment. I am now going to draw the vector AC up here, so we can see that it also forms the angle theta with vector P. We'll now be taking the dot product of these two vectors. Hopefully you're familiar with the dot product. Uh, it has two forms. The first tells us that AC dot P is equal to the length of AC multiplied by the length of P multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. The second form tells us that AC dot P is also equal to the X component of AC multiplied by the X component of P plus the Y component of AC multiplied by the Y component of P. Now, if you're not familiar with the dot product, you might want to look up a proof for this, because certainly for me at least, it's not at all obvious that these two equations are equivalent. Anyway, if you're satisfied that they are, then we can continue. So notice that the right side of our equation for CD is very similar to the right side of the first equation for AC dot P. In fact, if we multiply both sides of our equation for CD by length P, we get that CD times length P is equal to the dot product of AC and P. So we can now just substitute in the other form of the dot product, which is easier to calculate in this case. Let's now isolate CD by dividing both sides of the equation by length P. We can then substitute in the calculations for the different components of the vectors. So the X component of AC becomes CX minus AX, the X component of P becomes negative BY plus AY, and so on. All we have to do now is calculate the length of P, which is just done using the Pythagorean theorem, square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, remember how I said that CD could be negative depending on the value for theta? Well, if we want the actual positive length, we of course simply take the absolute value of the result. Now, this equation gives us the shortest distance between a point C and the line passing through points A and B, so that concludes the main part of this video, but there are two further things I want to mention. First of all, it's sometimes the case that we have multiple points, and we don't care about their actual distances from the line, we only want to sort them based on how far away they are. If this is the case, we can of course do the computation a lot more efficiently by leaving out the square root term. 
Secondly, if we want to figure out on which side of the line a point lies, we can use the same equation without the square root term, but instead of taking the absolute value, we take the sine of the result. This will give us positive 1 if a point lies on one side of the line, negative 1 if it lies on the other side, and 0 if it lies exactly on the line. So of course, if we want to figure out if two points are on the same side of the line, we can just compute this value for both of them and check if it's the same. Alright, that is everything for this video. Cheers!